speakers. We have a special treat. Uh, you saw our poster session last night, uh, and I'm happy uh, to share with you, and some of you know this, that uh, Taylor Adams is the uh, winner of our abstract session with the best poster, so let's hear it for Taylor. And now I'm going to ask Taylor to uh, approach the podium and give us a presentation of his research. Taylor. Hi, my name is uh, Taylor Adams. Um, I want to start by saying thank you to the uh, Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation for giving me the chance to come here and share the research that we've been working on. Uh, I'm going to be presenting on um, single cell RNA sequencing of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis lungs. Which is this? Green arrow. This one. Okay. So, uh, why choose single cell RNA seq to uh, to look at the IPF lung? Well, I'm, as I'm sure most of us are already aware, uh, the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a particularly complex disease that involves changes in behavior of a variety of cell types throughout the lung. Uh, single cell RNA-seq can provide us with a comprehensive perspective of the statuses of these different cell types. It can allow us to uh, tease apart shifts uh, in gene expression signals that come from uh, changes in the composition of cell populations from uh, changes in gene regulation within the cells themselves. and. Um, Perhaps, I mean, most excitingly, uh, for me at least, uh, this approach uh, is sort of uh, pathogenically agnostic uh, by uh, examining all the data that we can find from the lung, it, whatever we can find. Um, it allows us to maybe detect IPF signals that we otherwise might not have thought to, to have looked for in the first place. So um, our experiment, uh, we had uh, IPF lungs from our collaborators uh, at Yvonne Rosas' group in Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston. They, uh, IPF lungs came from patients undergoing transplants where uh, control lungs came from unused, suitable donor lungs that went unused at the time of transplant. The lungs were mechanically minced, enzymatically dissociated, filtered into the single cell suspensions that we have informally been describing as uh, cell soups which were then uh, stored in liquid nitrogen, which is, this is when our lab got involved. We uh, took these cell soup uh, frozen suspensions, thawed them, and generated single cell RNA-seq libraries using a high throughput proprietary platform called uh, the Chromium Single Cell 3 Prime Solution from 10X Genomics. Uh, briefly, how this works is uh, there are these microscopic hydrogel beads, each covered with uh, oligo-DTs intended to hybridize to polyadenylated uh, mature messenger RNA covered all over these beads. Upstream of that oligo-DT is a specific barcode, a genetic barcode for each bead. Now these microscopic beads in these cells are forced through a microfluidics chamber where they're encapsulated in a microscopic droplet around a nanoliter in volume, uh, ideally one cell and one bead per droplet. And the, within the droplet, the cell is lysed, mature messenger RNA is released, hybridizes onto the bead, reverse transcription occurs within the droplet, turning the RNA into cDNA, and then the droplets are broken, all the beads are pooled, and uh, from then on, it more or less follows a traditional RNA-seq library prep workflow. Uh, it's only during uh, the com computational analysis do we sort the barcodes to figure out which transcripts came from which bead and thus which cell. Uh, so this method allows us to do thousands and thousands of cells at a time. Um, so uh, we profiled five IPF lungs, five control lungs. Uh, it was four uh, male and one, one female from each group. There are two replicates for the IPF group. Uh, together we profiled, um, well, we specify any cell any barcode with over 200 unique genes was defined as a cell. We further filtered cells based on, uh, we filtered out cells with over 20% of their uh, transcriptome being represented by the mitochondrial RNA as bad quality, and this left us with uh, a little over 18,000 cells, uh, nearly 11,000 from the IPF group and over 7,000 from controls. Um, so uh, that's great, you know, we've got all this data, you know, 
tens of thousands of genes across tens of thousands of cells. Uh, how do we visualize, how do we interpret this? Um, so for anyone who's uh, already familiar with single-cell RNA-seq, you've probably noticed this plot here on the left. This is a clustering analysis plot uh, generated from an algorithm called T-stochastic neighbor embedding, or T-SNE. So uh, what we're looking at here is there's little dots all over the, all over the, the plot, and the dots represent a cell. Each cell or dot is clustered in proximity to other ones based on how similar the transcriptome profile is. So uh, when we do this, we see five broad uh, categories of, um, of cell types, myeloid, lymphoid, um, both immune type cells, epithelial, endothelial, and assorted mesenchyme. Uh, but when we subset these individual uh, cell types and uh, recluster them, we can find uh, more specific uh, cell types, uh, we found 24 in all, 22 of which were uh, represented in both control and IPF. And we uh, identified these cell types by looking at specific markers from each cluster and uh, reconciling them with uh, known transcriptional markers from the literature. So uh, before I get started on sort of the next act of this presentation, I'm going to say our our lab focuses a lot on the uh, epithelial and fibrotic or f and uh, fibroblast cells, so I wanted to sort of cover some of the some signals we found in some of the lesser described cell types in the lung. Um, so uh, lymphatic endothelial cells, uh, which are both Claudin five and LIV one positive, are sort of they're rarely talked about in IPF. So uh, we found was among other things. Uh, Interferon regulatory factor two binding protein two is significantly upregulated in the IPF lymphatic endothelial cells, which um, among many other things is known to repress activation of a nuclear factor of activated T cells or NFAT responsive promoters. And uh, the upregulation of NFAT transcription factors as well as a compensatory upregulation of alternative NFAT inhibitors has very recently been uh, associated with disease progression in IPF patients. Uh, we also found an upregulation of neurotensin, which is normally thought to only be expressed in the central nervous system or the gut, but it has been known to enhance expression of epidermal growth factor receptor, or EGFR, and uh, contract smooth muscle. Uh, also another interesting gene we found uh, upregulated in the IPF is um, EGF-containing fibolin-like, which uh, in addition to its role as an extracellular matrix protein, in uh, providing structural support to cells is also capable of binding to EGFR and activating downstream pathways. So these are, I guess, reasons to think that uh, EGFR might play a role in um, IPF pathogenesis. Uh, amongst uh, CD4 positive helper T cell populations, we found uh, an upregulation of S100 A4 calcium binding protein, which is um, its role in uh, fibrosis in the mesenchyme is already well established. However, uh, we find it expressed in the T cells. We find it expressed higher in IPF T cells. Its role is still not entirely known in T cells. However, it has been linked to motility and invasion. Um, we also see upregulation of the cytokine IL-32, as well as uh, downregulation of tumor necrosis factor alpha-induced protein three. Um, so. Uh, Single cell can let us do more than just see what's differentially expressed in one group or another. Uh, amongst this, so, this group here of, um, we're calling them indeterminate macrophage because they have a profile that's neither overtly alveolar nor is it interstitial. Uh, here I have a, a photo or another t of the subclustering of this group. The IPF's in the blue, the control's in the red. So we see this sort of shift in the difference here. So, there are a suite of genes that are upregulated across the board in the IPF group, including MRC1, which is uh, the macrophage. It's associated with the alternative activation state of macrophage, uh, KLF6 transcription factor, and also, curiously, the uh, two long non-coding RNAs, MALLET1 and NEAT1. So these, within the seemingly homogeneous cell population, this characteristic is shared across all IPF uh, cells. However, some of these more uh, traditionally uh, IPF-associated markers like uh, MMP7, chitinase, chitinase like one, MMP9, they're really found expressed in a particular subset of the IPF macrophage. Um, and alternatively, we see another 
aberrant exp uh, gene expression profile of, we see a uh, fibronectin and versican extracellular matrix enriched in a different uh, cell cell population of what's seemingly the same cell type. Um, uh, this finding was sort of, I guess, speaks to the power of the technology of single cell RNA-seq, especially the high throughput methods. So when we subcluster the B cell group, we find uh, this unique cytotoxic B cell subpopulation. It's shown in red here, and it shares properties with uh, MZB1 expression, which is known to be associated, it's supposed to be specific to plasma B cells. SBIB, a transcription factor, is supposed to be specific to memory cells. It shares both these qualities. Uh, curiously, it is ex uh, expresses high levels of granzyme B, which is usually thought to only happen in NK cells. Now, uh, what's cool about this is that this rare cell subtype was found exclusively in the IPF lung. It was found at least one cell of this group was represented in all five of our IPF patients. None were ever found in, so far in the control group. And uh, just to speak how rare this cell was, um, it represents a less than 0.08% of the total IPF cells that we profiled. So had we only done one lung, we might not have been able to find it. Had we, you know, not been in the tens of thousands, it wouldn't have shown up at all. So this is, I mean, this is pretty exciting. So uh, just to wrap things up here, uh, I only showed you a very small bit of the, this data set we have, but uh, virtually every lung, t uh, every cell type profiled in the lung uh, has an aberrant uh, expression signal in the IPF lung. Um, we see that, you know, seemingly a homogeneous uh, group of the same cells can have diverging uh, aberrant signal phenotypes, which we would not have been able to see through bulk analysis. And we found this uh, very rare uh, subpopulation exclusive to the IPF, IPF lung. So, um, First and foremost, I need to thank um, my PI, Naftali Kaminsky, for letting a post-baccalaureate uh, junior researcher like myself be a part of such exciting uh, research. I need to thank uh, Farida Ahangari and Jonas Shupp, uh, lab mates, for providing invaluable, invaluable work on this project as well. I need to thank Ivan Rosa's group at Brigham and Women's for letting us have access to their precious samples. Uh, I specifically need to thank Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation for letting me come here and uh, show our research, and I also just want to thank uh, the rest of our, our lab for the support they've given me.